Hi everyone, welcome back to Noah the Explorer. I am Dr. Akaranu. I am an adult, child, and adolescent psychiatrist, currently working as a locum tenens physician, hence this series where I talk about my work as a locum tenens psychiatrist. Today, I wanted to touch on how to take a locum tenens agency and a recruiter in a little bit more detail than I have in the previous videos. To do locum tenens work, you can either go through locum tenens companies or you can do this on your own as an independent contractor, contacting different facilities and hospitals on your own, offering your services. So the locum tenens companies are staffing agencies that act as middlemen to connect physicians to the places that need the physician's work. In the world of locum tenens work, you have to work with locum tenens companies for some of the work and you can also go on your own. For a lot of physicians, going on your own requires a lot of work on the back end. It's the most beneficial to go on your own. However, you will be on the computer job searching for months and months and months emailing, emailing, rejections, emailing, rejections, emailing, <laughs> rejections, emailing. Some hospitals actually will not respond to an independent contracting physician and they would prefer that you go through the locums company. And then some physicians also find out that using a locums company, you tend to make more money than if you went directly contracting with the hospitals. I spent a whole year looking for work and I was able to independently contract with a facility. But my contract ended because they hired permanent staff. So when they hired a permanent child psychiatrist, they ended my contract. There was no issues. They just hired someone permanent. So then I was back on the job hunt after spending months looking for an independent contracting position, trying to bypass the locum tenants companies. So locum tenants agencies, they help manage some of the administrative tasks and they provide ongoing support during assignments, which is so, so nice. They take care of your hotel. They take care of your flight. They take care of your credentialing. They take care of, honestly, they take care of a lot of things. If you have a good locum agency recruiter, they truly do exist to make your life easier. If you have a recruiter that doesn't do that, you need to ask for a different recruiter or find a different company to work for. Your recruiter should not be adding headache to your life. It should be making your life easier. They get a cut of your salary for that reason. The locum tenens companies take a cut of your salary as a physician to find you the job and to find the hospital, the physician. And hospitals would rather do that than go directly to a physician for their own reasons. I don't fault them for that. That's the business of medicine. If you have to use locum companies, use them. And just know that they're going to take a cut of your salary, sometimes up to 50% percent. But locums companies, they have a lot of staff that can look for multiple jobs at the same time. So kind of have to pick and choose what works for you. The recruiter you work with can make or break your assignment. So you need to be more proactive. If you don't like the recruiter, if you feel like they're not responsive, ask for someone else. Now, the cons of working with the locum tenens agency, it can involve agency fees. There is a degree of dependence on the agency, right? There is a non-compete. If you get the job and you like the job and you want to stay, they, the hospital will have to buy out your contract from the locums company. Ideally, you want to contract directly, right? That is what I would recommend. That's been where I've had the most autonomy negotiating my contract, getting all my money back in my pocket. But unfortunately, for a lot of hospitals, you, you're not really going to have much luck trying to go to the hospitals directly yourself. You can try. I, in fact, I encourage everyone to try. But at the end of the day, you do have to go through some locums companies. And so you really have to know the difference between each company, Talk to a lot of your physician colleagues. In my case, I didn't know anybody that was doing locum tenens. So I joined physician Facebook groups for locum tenens physicians. And that's how I learned a lot more about locum tenens work. Using an agency, consider uh, the job opportunities and assignments that the agency can bring you. Now, every agency will say that they have lots of jobs and they can bring you lots of assignments. But just because they have lots of jobs doesn't mean that's the job that you want. Not all jobs are created equally, so you need to vet the jobs. 
And the only way to know what's a good job versus what's a bad job is to talk to other physicians. Feel free to talk to me. You can always send me a DM, comment down below, and I will go ahead and answer your questions to the best of my abilities. I am not a contract lawyer. I will always recommend you see a contract lawyer, specifically one that works with healthcare professionals. Be prepared to pay anywhere from $400 to $500 per contract. That I would say for a resident and a fellow, that really should be the maximum that you're paying. If you're already an attending, they probably will charge you more. But when I hired the contract lawyers to review my locum tenants contracts with the locums companies I was talking to, they charged me 400 and depending on the complexity, $500 per contract review. And they put me on a payment plan <laughs> because I couldn't afford it. I, I could not afford that because I had them review, I want to say five contracts and at $500 a piece, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So they put me on a payment plan and um, eventually I paid them off. I have told some recruiters that, hey, I'm only looking for inpatient or outpatient and I want jobs where I can do two weeks on and two weeks off or, you know, one week on, one week off, almost like a hospitalist internal medicine physician would do. And sometimes the recruiters just send me any job that they have and the recruiters that are actually paying attention will send me the jobs that I asked for. <laughs> so that's one way to know if your recruiter is listening to you or at the very least taking notes and saying, hey, Dr. Akaranu, I know you want seven on seven off jobs or two weeks on two week off jobs. This is a position that I think they might be amenable to your schedule if we ask, do you still want me to tell you about this position? So at least you know that, hey, this recruiter knows that this job might not be ideal for me and they've paid attention enough to know that, but they still think it will be a good fit. So they're presenting the offer to me anyway. So in that instance, it's probably best to go with a company that is big and has a lot of recruiters. That way, if you don't like the recruiter that you're talking to, you could just talk to a different recruiter. You don't have any obligation to talk to one recruiter, even if it's from the same company. If you feel that the recruiter is not listening to you, if they're not bringing you assignments that you asked for or that you've been specific about, you can ask for another recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there is a locum company that have a different recruiter for a different state. So that's one way to say, you know what, I don't really like the jobs that I'm finding in Georgia. Can I work with a different recruiter who has a different corner of the market and see maybe there's something else in the Midwest versus the South versus the Southeast or, you know, up North. So that's one way to change recruiters and see if you get better offers somewhere else. On that note, I am going to go ahead and end the video here. Please catch up on the previous videos if you haven't already. And we'll continue our discussion on local tenant psychiatry in the next video. Thank you so much.